now we are going to take a look at the last big group of life that we've uh, seen since we've come up from sponges all the way to chordates we're going to take a look at endothermic vertebrates which are what common term is that for that is warm blooded so these endothermic really means can maintain a constant temperature and for the chemical reactions of life to function properly it's important to maintain a very narrow temperature for a certain species for a certain organism so endothermic life is important a couple of the things that are required for endothermic life uh, most of these are land creatures would be lung breathing but most importantly a four chambered heart and the endothermic life is very important because it allows the chemical reactions of life to function at such a high level that high levels of cognitive of brain function can start to occur so creatures can think can there can be behavior um, a lot of higher level things that we take for granted um, are tied into being endothermic or as again the lay say warm-blooded driven by the four chambered heart taking a quick look back we see how um, before we can see how birds and mammals have improved remember where we came from fish amphibians and reptiles slowly evolved from completely living in water fish gills two chambered heart to living on both land and water which is amphibians larva stage two chambered heart with gills and the amphibians lungs and three chambered hearts for the most part to finally a complete life on land reptiles uh, they can lay eggs on land, they have lungs, they're born with lungs, they're hatched with lungs, I should say. And they have a three-chambered heart, and in some cases, like a crocodile, it's approaching almost a four-chambered heart. The next step, though, because those are all ectothermic, cold-blooded, they're the temperature of their ambient um, temperature, the temperature around them. If it's a cold morning, they're cold. If it's a hot, hot, hot afternoon, they're very hot. So that temperature, vast temperature range that they live in does not allow for the chemical reactions of life to function at a very high level, very efficiently. So the next step would be to try to move towards endothermic life, warm-blooded, where the, the operating temperature of the creature is a very narrow range, and so the chemical reactions of life can function at a at a much more efficient, much higher level, and this is allows then for the development of a, a larger brain and a much more complex nervous system. Again, in review, here we see some images of a two-chambered heart. Uh, it's, this happens to be a fish tadpole type of heart, two-chambered, an atrium, and a single ventricle pumping in a single loop around uh, the organism's body. Um, gills, body, heart, gills, body, heart, like that. Then we have a three-chambered heart in a frog where we see that the, the upper, the atrium, have been separated into a right and left atrium because now we're pumping blood to a lungs. It's a double loop system, lung to heart and a body to heart. So there's two different loops. So we've, we've introduced a, uh, a double catching system but we still mix the poor blood and the good blood into the ventricle to be pumped out so some of the good blood goes back to the lungs not very efficient some of the poor blood goes back to the uh, body not very efficient in the th three chambered reptile heart we have a septum which is a divi uh, divider and it's almost complete in a crocodile so it minimizes the mixing of the ventricle blood then finally in the four chambered heart you can see that the septum of the ventricles is completely separated so none of the ox poor oxygen blood mixes with the rich oxygen blood in the ventricles so all the poor oxygen blood gets pumped to the lungs and all the richer oxygen blood gets pumped to the body and the key point there is to the brain because a highly developed brain needs a lot of oxygen to function at a high level. The advantage of a, of a four-chambered heart, as I kind of just covered, the oxygen-rich blood returning from the lungs is not mixed with the poor, oxygen-poor blood returning from the body. This increases the efficiency, in, which is needed because of the higher oxygen demands of exothermic or endothermic life. This rich oxygen blood is pumped to the body, 
and the poor oxygen blood is all pumped to the lungs to be reoxygenated, higher causing a higher functioning nervous system, which needs high higher levels of uh, oxygen rich blood to function at their optimum levels. And then finally, with this higher level of a, a nervous system, brain, and so on, the birds and mammals can engage in higher level functioning, especially in the areas of behavior, mating, socialization, caring for their young, um, having hunts where they control, uh, they, they, they cooperate with each other. Um, this higher level nervous system um, is, a, is a great stride in the development of, of animal life.